from New York City, Comedy Central presents Daniel Tosh. You guys are ready to go. I hope you don't mind if I just warm up a little bit first. Yeah, just do a couple of these. There you go. All right. You remember that exercise in PE class? Have you ever done it in your life since? The answer's no. You ever woke up in the morning and said, you know what I need to do today? Some of these. Yeah. There you go. That feels great. Now the other way. Well, that's awfully tricky. We wonder why we have a weight problem as a nation. I'm pretty sure this isn't cutting it. Oh, this is a great job. People applaud when I go to work. Yeah, that's a lot better than your job. I mean, it, don't get me wrong, it's not like a rock star where people lose their minds screaming. Can you imagine that at your job? Going in. Hey, how's it going, Kelly? Listen, I'm gonna need that memo on my desk by noon. No! Oh, hold on, I got something for you. <laughs> well, thanks, but I'm gonna still need that on my desk. I don't even know what women do in there. That's witchcraft, that's voodoo as far as I'm concerned. It takes me two hands, a pair of pliers. Three hours later, I'm pleading for some teamwork. Now, you can reach in here and grab your panties for crying out loud. What the heck is going on down there? Do you have a magic midget running up and down your back unhooking stuff? What, do you give him a crouton and then he disappears? I don't know how the magic midgets work. I, uh, I recently bought a pair of cargo pants. I don't even cargo. Yeah, they don't even check at the register. Anybody can buy those. They got all the pockets down the leg. Then one day I'm walking down the street and I said to myself, Daniel, this is not how your father raised you. You're wasting space. So I started to collect change from that day forward. Yeah, I have a five gallon jar at my house I like to fill with change. I don't stop till I reach the tip top and the little bell goes off and I know cargo pant day is here at last and I dance. <laughs> yeah. And I put the cargo pants on with a belt extra tight because I don't want to have an embarrassing situation on such a great day. And I fill up all the pockets with the change and then I get a car alarm. Not a car alarm with a car, just the car alarm. And I hold it to my chest really closely. And then I go walk around the streets of Manhattan and I wait for the first homeless person to come up to me and say, hey, you got any spare change? And I set the car alarm off. Wee, 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 you hit the jackpot, mofo. Oh, and then I start throwing all the change, and that hurts, but he doesn't care because he won. So he's jumping up and down. I won, I won, called a pit boss. And I'm like, calm down, Smelly, I don't have to. It's under $400. And that's how Oktoberfest started. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that is a true story. Oh. Sometimes when I'm home alone, I feel sad and I feel like nothing in my life is going right. So I like to take a home pregnancy test. <laughs> yeah, that way I can utter the phrase, hey, at least I'm not pregnant. <laughs> and I realize better days are right around the corner. I'm not very good with people either. Even when I was little, my imaginary friend would play with the kid across the street. <laughs> yeah, and I'd be like, hey, I guess we'll meet up later. And he'd be like, whatever, queer. <laughs> like, That's not nice at all. Do you think it's trendy for young kids in Japan to get tattoos of words written in English? Huh? Do you think they're walking around over there? Hey, Kim, check this out. I just got it yesterday. It means love and water. <laughs> oh, that's sexy. No, I don't like tattoos. I know my generation loves to get them. I'm not a fan. My friends try to always sell me on them. They're like, tattoos, that's an artistic expression. I'm like, wow, because it looks like a butterfly above your cooter. But I guess in your circle, that's art. I think if you're gonna get a tattoo, just get one. The words, I'm dumb, that's it. That way in 10 years, when you go, why did I get this? You can be like, no, <laughs> I'm dumb. Me not talking, no more. Yeah. I live in Los Angeles. Girls in Los Angeles like to say this, I'm not religious, but I'm spiritual. Ooh, I like to reply, I'm not honest, but you're interesting. <laughs> yeah, all right. I know a lot of you think I'm kind of crazy, I am, I have voices in my head, but they speak in Spanish and I have no idea what they're saying. That's irritating, I wish one of them would get a job. 
Uh, they're my voices, don't worry about them. What's a good time for me? I'll tell you. My favorite robe, some yogurt, and an episode of Trading Spaces. Oh, then I'm in heaven. Do you love Trading Spaces? I do. I would never be on that show, though. You want to know why? Because you have to trust your friends to decorate your house. You have not met my friends. They do not my, have my best interest at heart. Because it's always some over-the-top eccentric interior designer coming in going, oh my goodness, I love this place. This is what I'm thinking for your friend's house. Circus tent. Big circus tent. Do you think your friend would like a circus tent? Oh yeah, he'd love a circus tent. No, 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 yeah. Why don't you go dig up the hardwood floors, get down to the dirt, that way the ponies will feel at home. Great, we're under budget. Now, I'm a lousy piece of ass, and I should know. I've been there almost every time. <laughs> oh, but it's not my fault. I never got a birds and the bees speech as a child. I mean, the closest thing I ever got one time, my dad was cooking breakfast. He's like, son, you better listen up, because I'm only going to say this one time. He was in the Fugees. <laughs> Thanks. Sex is a lot like this egg. I'm like, egg? Dad, I think that's drugs. <laughs> Whatever, queer. <laughs> Why is everyone saying that? J just listen, all right? First thing you gotta do is heat up the bed real nice, get it nice and warm, get it ready for her. All right. Then you gotta take her, crack her over the head, and lay her out flat, all right? <laughs> Come on now, wait till she starts sizzling really good, then you can flip her on over, there you go. Yeah, oh, don't get too excited or you get yellow stuff all over the bacon. What's, what's going on? Oh, ooh, that's a gross, no it's not. That's a breakfast joke. That's the most important joke of the day. Yeah, if you don't laugh at that, you're gonna get sleepy around 11.30. And you'll be like, why am I so tired? Maybe not. I was dating this girl, she got a boob job, a breast enlargement, but she put squeak toys in them. Yeah, and I'm like <laughs> She was a clown, so it was a tax write-off. Ah, the floor is lava. Whew. I almost got burnt there. Uh, well, yeah, you don't know what that is? Fine, I don't care. That's a game I used to play as a child. The floor is lava. It's when you'd climb on all the furniture in your house and you couldn't touch the floor. Yeah, you might have called it something completely different, but it meant the same thing. You were poor. Yeah, because I remember going, Mom, I would like a Nintendo. And she's like, the floor is lava. I'm like, what the hell is wrong with our house? Why can't we afford carpet? It's called two jobs, bitch. No. That's how I used to talk. I was very street. All right, maybe not. <laughs> I, uh, I'm going to be a horrible father. But I know this, and I don't have any kids. So I think that's pretty good. Trust me, I have a lot of friends. Like, I'm going to make a great dad. Wow, because you're a complete loser now. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not against responsibility. I'm actually looking into legally adopting a granddaughter. <laughs> yeah, because being a grandpa is cool, and it's really easy. That'll be awesome. I'll adopt some cute little 14-year-old girl. And she'll be like, hey, Dad, thanks for adopting. I'm like, whoa, 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 I'm your grandpa. And she'll be like, oh, well, see you at Christmas. <laughs> a couple years go by, she's in college, comes home with some of her friends. I'm like, hey, girls, why don't you come over here and sit on grandpa's lap? <laughs> and she'll be like, oh, grandpa. Because you never report grandpa for being creepy. <laughs> Life is what you make it. Have you heard that? Yeah, do you live it? You don't. I live it. I have a great life. My friends think it's so much better than it really is. Why? Because I make it better. That's right. You want to know where I'm working next week? Hawaii. Yeah. I'm going to be in Hawaii. All right, really? I'm going to be in New Bern, North Carolina. Yeah, but in my mind, I'm going to Hawaii. And you can do it too, and it is a lot cheaper. Anytime you're going someplace that you don't want to go, just pretend you're going to Hawaii. Pack a bunch of flowered shirts, jump off the plane, be like, aloha, everybody. <laughs> Where's my lay? You're in trouble. Order tropical drinks all week. When you get home, your friends will be like, hey, we've never been to Hawaii. How was it? And just be like, oh, it was all right. I even took my girlfriend last week to Paris. The whole time. She's like, this looks a lot like Birmingham, Alabama. And I'm like, shut up, Britney Spears. And she's like, quit calling me Britney Spears. And I'm like, no one talks to The Rock like that, bitch.
Yeah. Which is really funny because I don't have a girlfriend. That was just some lady on the bus. She did not smell what I was cooking. <laughs> have you guys flown since 11-9? I'm European. It's not, it's not fun to fly, I tell you. I have one of those cell phones with the earpiece that hangs straight down. So when you talk, you look like you're crazy. Everybody eavesdrops in your conversation. They don't want to, they're forced to because you project right out of the air. So when I get a phone call at the airport, I'll admit it, I like to have a little fun. Go ahead. <laughs> Gate 47 is completely clear. People notice in a hurry. Honey, something's going on. That guy has a wire hanging down. Maybe we shouldn't be standing right. Stand down, blue team. Stand down, blue team. Honey, there is a sting going on here at the airport. I am not feeling safe. Please, let's move. Stand down, blue team. Don't. Hold on, the suspect's approaching. He's in a business suit with the briefcase. I repeat, the briefcase is in his hand. And I find some random businessman. I run, I just beat the crap out of him. And everybody starts clapping. Thank you for making our airways safe. And then I go get on my plane. And that guy's just got a weird story to tell for the rest of his life. Yeah, he's like, I'm never going back to Los Angeles again. I was at the airport a couple days ago and this guy came out of nowhere and he just beat me up. <laughs> and everybody just clapped. <laughs> what is wrong with those people? I think, uh, I think boxers are the greatest athletes in all of sports for the simple fact that they don't cry. <laughs> that is mind blowing. Have you ever been punched in the nose? Oh my gosh, it hurts so bad. They have to go back to a corner where some little man yells at him. Shut up, I just got punched in the face. Yeah, I know, dodge and punch for it is a very simple concept. If I was a boxer, you know who I would hire for my corner man? My mom. At least she could make me feel good on the inside. I don't wanna fight anymore. Who's my big boy? You are, yes, you, do you want me to call his parents? No? Okay, then dry those tears, pussy. That's why dad left. <laughs> Cannibalism is a horrible scenario. I'm not gonna argue with you. But if you had to eat another human being to survive, do you think they taste like their ethnic background? <laughs> do you think Mexicans are spicy? <laughs> do you have to have chips and salsa before you bite into one? You can start laughing now. I'm gonna do everybody in here. <laughs> Chinese people, are you hungry 30 minutes later for more? <laughs> Let's go, everybody. Black people, tastes like chicken. <laughs> all's fair, all's fair. White people, all right, you don't eat white people. I'm sorry, I don't make the rules. <laughs> do you at least understand why I end the joke that way? because it's so funny to make a room full of white people uncomfortable. <laughs> oh, see, we laughed at black people taste like chicken because we kind of thought you were going to throw one in our direction. And now you pretty much hung us out to dry. <laughs> it's just a joke. What if that joke is the reason I don't get into heaven? Like, I get up to heaven, find out God's black. Yeah, he comes walking up to me. Oh, that joke wasn't funny, motherfucker. Let me tell you something. Black people taste like chicken. White people taste like macaroni and cheese, bitch. <laughs> All right. Calm down, crackers. This ain't a rally. I don't want anyone getting the wrong idea. I, I know uh, that was, I doubt God's using that kind of language, and that's a very stereotypical voice I use for an African American. I apologize. How many black comics have you heard in your lifetime go, you know, white people. Hi, Bob, how are you? Good, Tom, thanks for asking me. I don't sound like that at all. That's very offensive. I did that joke one night, and of course, a white lady came running up to me after the show. She goes, what gives you the right to do jokes about black people like that? I'm like, listen, lady, my best friend is Cuban, and that's close enough. <laughs> yeah. She was like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Does everybody have their WJD bracelets on? Do you know what that is, everybody? What would Jesus do? They're not magical. They're just a reminder to be a better person, to live a better life. It's true.
because I was wearing my bracelet recently and I was in the movie theater. This guy's cell phone went off. Don't you just hate that? Yeah. And I'm like, mm. and then he picked it up. Hey, how's it going? I'm in a movie. And I'm like, hey, get off the phone. And he's like, mind your own business. And I almost went crazy. But then I looked at my bracelet. <laughs> what would Jesus do? So I lit him in fire and sent him to hell. <laughs> yeah. I did. I'll be honest, I felt a lot better afterwards. Those things work. <laughs> Money doesn't buy happiness. That phrase should end with, just kidding. <laughs> good. I'm not a good sport, I'll admit it. I don't enjoy watching other people succeed. That's why all my best friends are in the seventh grade. <laughs> you can do it too, it's great for your esteem. No matter what, they come, oh, I got an A on my paper. Oh, I have a car. I don't like game shows. I don't like watching people win money. My biggest fear in my life is my next door neighbor knocks on my door one day. Hey, Daniel, get out of here. I just won the lottery. Oh, I'm out of here for good. Hold on. Have you told anybody yet? No, no, no you're the first one. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you can cremate someone in a gas fireplace, but I'll find out. <laughs> and these game shows giving away millions of dollars. Who wants to watch that? I'd like a game show with millionaires on it. And they have to play with their own money. Yeah, and they can't win money, they can only lose till one of them goes completely broke. Yeah, and the show's called, Ha Ha, Now You're Poor. <laughs> I'd watch that show every day. What time is it? It's Ha Ha, Now You're Poor time. <laughs> That's the dance you do when it comes on, I guess. <laughs> now, you know, the, the worst television, MTV. I can't stand, music television. They call it that, they don't even play music. How's that legal? <laughs> what if everybody did that? Hey, thanks for calling New York Pizza. Yeah, give me two large pepperoni pizzas. Oh, we don't sell pizza. <laughs> what? No, we just have raccoon hats and eye patches. <laughs> Call a bookstore if you're hungry. They have a show on MTV that I can't stand. Cribs. You ever watch Cribs? Yeah, that show should be called Wanna Feel Like a Failure? <laughs> Little Bow Wow has an S series. That's not right. I'll tell you what, though. If I ever get really famous, I promise you the greatest Cribs episode of all time. Oh, you can trust me on this one. I'm going to hire Universal Studios to come over to my house, build an extension of caves and corridors that go from my bedroom to the bathroom. That way, every night when I wake up to go pee, the adventure begins. So I wake up, right, I'm like scared and nervous and I have to go and the camera crew's following me and I'm like, ooh, and I hire Vin Diesel to hide and jump out and scare me and sword fight me and he's like, prepare to die and I'm like, calm down, you overactor, I'm paying you to lose and he's like, ugh, and then I kill him and there's a princess tied up and she's like, thank you, I've been here for so long, I'm like, no time for talk, you gotta tinkle, let's run. We start going, the walls start closing in, yeah, there's doors going down and rocks everywhere and we have to go across an old rope bridge but halfway across the rope bridge, the bottom one sets on fire and it snaps and she falls, but I got her with one arm. Yeah, I can feel her slipping, but she's looking up at me going, I'll never stop loving you. Close up on my eyes and a close up on her eyes and a close up on my eyes, close, like, and then she falls. Like, ah! And I'm like, why? Why? And I snap out of that, I gotta pee like a racehorse. Back up onto the rope. I get to the bathroom, I pull my pajamas down because I sit down and pee like a girl when I'm at my house. It's my house, I feel more comfortable that way. Don't judge me, the Bible says not to. But as soon as I sit down, a hologram of my dad pops up and he's like, Daniel, this is your father. Make sure you look behind the shower curtain before you... Too late. A dragon comes from behind the shower curtain. Yeah, it's going to spray me with fire, but I rip the medicine cabinet off right... Mir ching ching kills the dragon. Then I go to the bathroom. And I go back to bed. No one even knows I added these extensions onto my house. It's top secret. My maid comes running in. Daniel, Daniel, what was all that ruckus? And I'm like, oh, Helga, it was nothing. Now get back to your quarters. And she's like, hmm. Then I roll over and stare at the camera crew, and I go, shh. <laughs> and the camera goes back onto Vin Diesel's body, close up on his face. And then his eyes open. Oh, did, did you get chills? Yeah. Let's see P. Diddy top that crib. <laughs> Thanks a lot, you guys.